Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? It is a delight to be with you today. Thanks so much for joining us and letting us be part of your day. Right now, if at all possible, reach over, pick up your Bible and open it with me as mine sits open to 2 Peter in chapter 3. 2 Peter 3, our focus will be verse 9. Now, along with getting your Bible, also get something on which you can jot some notes. There's three particular statements I want you to jot down today from our time in studying 2 Peter 3, 9. Please, if at all possible, stay for the whole time period. I also want to uh, encourage you to be getting some gospel tracts from us. Now, that word track refers to an evangelism tool. The word is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's an evangelism tool whereby the gospel message is put into a short written format. It's in a format easily to carry. You can take it in your shirt pocket. I keep some in my back pocket. Women keep them in their purse. Wherever it's convenient for you, they're easy to take with us. We can give them to people, to people that we do not have the ability because of time constraints to share with them the gospel eyeball to eyeball, word by word, we can give them the gospel and they can hear how to be saved. These are tremendous tools. People are coming to Christ all over the world every single day through gospel tracts. I'll talk about one here in just a minute. Let me lead into our Bible study time this way. In our verse for today, we find one of the most beloved truths in all of the Bible, but we also find one of the most fought over statements in all the Bible. Today we come to look, as I said, at 2 Peter 3, 9, and there we read this phrase. It speaks about the Lord. It says that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What a wonderful truth. God does not want people, any person, to go to hell and be punished forever and ever in the lake of fire. Praise God for that. We serve a God with compassion for sinners, and again, for all sinners, If that is the will of God, then the question that begs an answer is this. Why then do so many people go out into eternity without Christ as Savior and go into a place called hell? Now, to help me answer that question, I need to remind you of the Christmas story. You remember the story well, I know. In that story, Joseph, the betrothed husband of Mary, found himself with a huge dilemma. Mary was pregnant before their wedding night. The Bible says that Joseph had two wills on this matter. Stay tuned. I'll show you what I mean. I mentioned the gospel tracts here a moment ago. The one particular track in my hand right now was entitled, Will You Live Forever? Will you live forever? It's an appropriate track for our Bible study today. And the answer is yes. Everybody's going to live forever. The answer is where? This gospel track opens with these words. You will live forever. The question is where? It can be in heaven. It's up to you. It goes on to say there that the Bible teaches all the dead, saved and lost, all are going to be raised from the dead, but they are going to then be judged. The lost are going to be judged by Jesus Christ, the one who came, the God who came to earth in man form and lived an earthly life, died a physical death. He will be the judge. He is the rightful judge. But then The Bible says that if Christ had not himself risen for the dead, we have no hope for the future. But then it lays out the fact that there will be at this judgment, as awful judgment, as we stand before Jesus Christ, the wounded man of Calvary, we will find out why, if we have rejected him, why that is the worst sin of all time to reject Christ. There is a way out. The gospel track lays it out. It's to receiving Christ as Savior. Will you live forever? A tremendous gospel track. 
At the end of the program, my announcer will give our contact information. Be ready. Jot down how to contact us. Give us your name and mailing address, and we'll send you that free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. We'll send it out normally in the very next business day's mail. Do that today. Well, if your Bible's open there to 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 says this, But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, yesterday, I began looking at these two verses, and these two verses are God's second answer to the scoffers that are mentioned there in verses 3 through 7 of the chapter. These false teachers scoffed at any Bible doctrine that is in, connected in any way to the teaching that God judges sinners. The first answer to their scoffing is found in verses 4, 5, and 6. There, God says that he has judged sinners in a dramatic worldwide fashion before at the time of Noah's flood and since God has already done one worldwide judgment before, it is not then out of his character to do it again. But now, in verses 8 and 9, we find God's second reply to the scoffing of these false teachers. In verses 8 and 9, he says two basic things. One is found in verse 8. There in verse 8, God says that he has a purpose when it comes to respect of time. God may not be, God may not have brought a second universal judgment on sinners yet, but God's way of dealing with time is not man's way. We may think God is way overdue, but God says, no, my dealing with time is different than yours. But now in verse 9, we find that God not only has a purpose with respect to time, but now in verse 9, God has a purpose with respect to sinners. His purpose is how he deals with sinners, and we find three, at least three key things said here out of verse 9. Three parts. Part number one is this. God has promised to judge sinners, and he will. Let me say that again. God has promised to judge sinners, and he will. God is not slack or slow in fulfilling his promises. If we were to go back to Genesis chapter 3, there God promised to send the seed of a woman to crush Satan. But he waited over 4,000 years to do that. So to all sinners listening, God has promised to judge you, and he will. That he's delaying is not an excuse for you to not deal with the God of holiness and righteousness and salvation. The second part out of verse 9 is this. God has patience in judging sinners. God is long-suffering towards sinners, verse 9 says. That word long-suffering literally means long wrath or God's anger being hemmed in from acting for a long, long time. But just as with the Christmas story, in the fullness of time, at the right time, Jesus came to be born, so too in the right time and God's time clock, God's fierce wrath will be poured out. There is no debate about that. Now we come to part number three, based upon verse nine. It's this, God has passion toward sinners. God has made a promise. God has patience. God has passion toward sinners. Verse 9 says that God is not willing that any should perish. The word willing speaks of God's desire. I spoke about Joseph and the Christmas story as the program began. If we were to turn to Matthew chapter 1, verse 19, there we're told that Joseph had two wills. One was clear, one was fixed, one was determined. He was going to put Mary away. He was going to set her aside. He was not going to go through with the marriage ceremony. Legally, they were married. Legally, he was going to divorce her. But he was not going to put her to public shame. 
because you see in Matthew chapter 1, verse 19, we also find that he desired, he had not a determinative will, but a desired will to find a way to put Mary away privately. To maintain his own self-respect, he had to put her away, but his compassion for this woman who was pregnant out of wedlock moved his heart, moved his actions to put her away in the least hurtful way possible. Now come back here to verse 9 of 2 Peter chapter 3. In his, in God's dealing with sinners, God has a determinative plan. He will judge them and he will, they will, that they perish in hell forever. That's his promise. Sinners go to hell. Yet, in his dealing with sinners, God's passion is not to see sinners perish. Well, how does God reconcile these two wills? Well, God reconciles his determinative will with his compassion by himself making a rescue plan. God himself provided an escape from his wrath. Why did he do this? For two reasons. He loves sinners, and then by doing his rescue plan, God will be glorified forever and ever. In making man in his own image, God gave to man the ability to think and to make his own decisions. God gave human beings the power to will, to to choose, to select. Do you remember poor Joseph and his dilemma? He had determined to put Mary away, but to do it with compassion. But wait a minute, wait. Did Joseph do it? Did Joseph follow through with his plan? The answer is no. He actually went 180 degrees away from his own plan. He married Mary knowing he would have to personally deal with the public shame. Why in the world did he do that? There's only one reason. God spoke to Joseph. God talked to Joseph. Joseph got a message of truth about Mary, and that truth message altered Joseph's course of action. What do we do with the gospel message? What do we do with it? We tell it to sinners. Sinners love to sin. They won't come to Christ on their own. So, just like with Joseph, they get the truth message of Calvary. They get the truth message of Jesus' shed blood and his empty tomb from those who do know the message. With that truth being given to them, sinners can alter their course like Joseph did. They can believe God's truth claim. They can escape the wrath to come. Dear listener, God acts with compassion towards sinners. Aren't you glad God acted with compassion towards you? But are you and I acting with compassion towards sinners ourselves? Are we acting like the God who saved us? Are we acting out of the new nature towards sinners the way God acts towards sinners? Oh, Get our tracks from us. Go show God's compassion to lost souls. Sinners left to themselves will not alter their course, but with the truth of the gospel, they may, they can, because like Joseph, the truth caused him to do something very unnormal. Receiving Christ is a work of the Spirit of God, but only after sinners get the truth of God. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.